When I was a little boy, my father took me to hear a famous jazz trumpet player named Dizzy Gillespie. He blew his cheeks out like this. But I didn't know about playing the trumpet, but as I used to watch the shofar blower in the synagogue during the feasts, I used to want to say, I'd like to blow the shofar. So in this Roots and Reflections, we're going to investigate about the shofar and how to blow a shofar, because I'm not any good at this. Hey, Baloo, you're my chauffeur today. Take me over so we can talk to Richard about how to blow a shofar. <laughs> shofar, show good. The first time the shofar is ever heard, technically, it was in Exodus 19, and it was sounded from heaven. And there was two to three million Jewish people with a mixed multitude at Mount Sinai gathered below. And that shofar that sounded from heaven got so loud it blew them away. It terrified them. It was so loud. Who was that shofar blower that sounded that shofar from heaven? Well, the clearest place you can see it is in Zechariah chapter 9, verse 14. And it says the following. And the Lord shall be seen over them, and his arrow shall go forth as the lightning, and the Lord God shall sound the shofar. Yeshua is the shofar blower of the Bible. It's found ten places in the scriptures of the Old and New Testament. The shofar is the voice of God. And the one who sounds it, Yeshua, has his priest sounding it until that day when he will come from heaven with his bride sounding the great shofar. What is the significance or the reasons for the blowing of the shofar? To get people's attention or what? It has so many different purposes, but what God has burdened me mainly is the mystery of Yeshua doing the shofar. He has his priests sounding it to announce his coming. It's sounded in times of spiritual battle. It sounded where God has done miracles when it sounded. But the main thing is all over the world to announce his coming. He has his priests sounding the shofar. What's the connection between Rosh Hashanah, which most Jewish people call the Jewish New Year, but we know biblically in the feast, it's the Feast of Trumpets. There's two places you see what we call the Feast of Trumpets in the scriptures. The first is in Leviticus 23, and it's verses 23 through 25. And what it calls this feast, it calls it Zikron Teruah. Zikron Teruah means the memorial of the Teruah. And Teruah, which we refer to as trumpet, actually means shout. The memorial shout was the first time that God gave it to his priests, that's what it was called, the memorial shout. And the second time is found in Numbers 29 verse 1, where it calls, talks about Yom Teruah, or the day of the shout. And from that, uh, we have the day of the trumpet sound. Mm. But technically, it's the day of the shout. And it's, a, it's another mystery, because we have the mystery of the Lord returning, where he shouts, and he, and he sounds the great trumpet. Tell us about the shofar. For instance, what is the difference between the kudu shofar and the ram's horn? Could you actually give us a sample of some of the sounds? That'd be a ram horn and the kudu horn. Yeah, there is a distinct and separation. The kudu would be much louder if I wanted something to go for miles. But they also used the silver trumpet. The silver trumpet was used, you had 12 tribes gathered around the tabernacle, and when the silver trumpets, when two of them were sounded, it would cause the uniting of the camp, bring the camp together into the presence of the Lord. But in Numbers 10, 9, it says, when you go to war in your land against the enemy who oppresses you, then you shall sound an alarm with two silver trumpets, and you shall be remembered before the Lord your God and saved from your enemies. 
So it has, it has many functions, many purposes. Do you, can you give us an example of the sound? Tell me about what happened in the year 2000 on the eve of the second intifada. Two days before we gathered, and we gathered on, on the day of Yom Tura or Rosh Hashanah in the year 2000, two days before, uh, Ariel Sharon with a group of Knesset members had gone up on the Temple Mount and that led to rioting because that was on Thursday, that led to rioting on Friday and we gathered together 27 of us the morning of Ro Rosh Hashanah Yom Teruah uh, and we gathered in the Ben Hinnom Valley and we were doing something that we had felt from the Lord. We brought together seven silver trumpets to repeat the march that we felt King David had done a few thousand years earlier when he had brought the Ark of the Covenant into the city. We knew that it said the Ark came up into the city of David and the only way to come up into the city of David was to come down through the Ben Hinnom Valley to the Kidron Valley and up into the city of David. So we gathered at 10 o'clock that morning and we sounded the seven silver trumpets at the Valley of Ben Hinnom and we went then to um, the pools of Shiloh, the pool, and we sounded seven silver trumpets there. And we had an amazing experience because it tied to a biblical pattern of how King David had made his son, King Solomon, the king. And it's found in 1 Kings uh, 1, chapter 39 to 40. And uh, so we repeated a pattern and the anointing of God came very powerfully that day as we inaugurated Yeshua the coming king for the millennial kingdom from Jerusalem on the year 2000. And then we went up to the Golden Gate, the, the Eastern Gate, where we sounded the seven silver trumpets again. It was a very fascinating day. I think things happened that are written in, um, in heaven regarding uh, spiritual things that happened that day. Hallelujah. So, hallelujah. <laughs>
from North Africa country like Morocco, Algeria, from many Arab countries where they eat a lot of uh, sheep meat, so they have a lot of rams. So we are putting the raw rams, the, the horns, and then we produce to make it, all the process to make it become a shofar. The process is all making to grinding, polishing, making a mouthpiece, drill it, and uh, make it a musical item like a shofar. So I understand there are many types of horns which become shofars. Can you explain these to us? Uh, because the uh, Jewish people came from all over the world, from many countries, and each uh, one brings his own uh, tradition, and they make shofar according to what uh, horns they, that, that was available, and the process was different. So if we look, we have the... Sfaradic, Ashkenaz, Shofar. Yes, it's made of ram horn, it's fully Polish. This is the regular Shofar, we call it, the Sfaradic yes. Ashkenaz Shofar. We have the Moroccan Shofar. You see, this is a flat Shofar. People used to take the horn and flat it. It's a lot of process of eating and softening the horn until it make, you, can, you can make it flat. So people also can hide it on their body where they take this show from. This is shofar, uh, we call it Italian shofar. This type of shofar, it's made for a special goat, it's not a ram. Yes, people from Italy used to blow this type of shofar. We have a Babylon shofar, people that came uh, from Iraq, Kurdistan, uh, they used to blow this type of shofar. We have the Yemenite shofar. This is Rem Yemenite. This type of shofar, no change of the shape of the horn, and we leave it naturally, fully mm. naturally. We have a special sound because it's natural. And we have what we call Yemenite shofar or antelope kudo shofar that usually people blow it for ceremonies. I'll show you the different sound of the shofar. For example, this is the regular Sfaradic shofar. Now, for example, the Yemenite shofar, because it's natural and no shape uh, change, the sound is very low and special sound. And uh, this is the Italian shofar, also a different sound. Each, each uh, shofar, because the, the shape, the thickness uh, is different, it's making different sound. And people coming here especially to select the sound. Mm. They want the authentic sound, what they used to hear at their father and their father, father uh, synagogue. Mm -hmm. Now, I remember when I was bar mitzvahed and I remember at uh, synagogue that they were blown from the side. The cantor blew it from the side of his mouth, whereas I see a lot of Westerners trying to blow it as a trumpet. <laughs> yes, uh, it, people uh, try uh, uh, differently. People that used to blow, uh, play music, they blow it from the center. But there is some mitzvah the saying that uh, to blow from the right side because we want to start the year on the right side. So people uh, were trying to blow from the right side. That's interesting. That's the first time I heard that. <laughs> well, I, I wanted to be a shofar blower because I used to see a trumpeter named Dizzy Gillespie play. <laughs> but I ended up playing guitar in the end. So do they all come like this? No, we have, this is the ram horn. Right. But the ram horn is growing on the animal head. Oh, I see. Yes, part of the bone is going inside, and part of it, part of it on the head. Yes. So after they kill the animal for the meat, for the skin, we are taking the horns by removing it from the, from the head taking the bone out, and then we have the raw horn. Yes, 
The problem is that it's not fully open. It's open about until third of it is open. Then we have to straight this section in order to drill it. Yes? So the next process, after we are taking the, the horn, you can see this is also a horn. After we straight it, we heat it, and it becomes soft, and then we can straight it. After that, the process is to start grinding. You see, after it's uh, removing the outer uh, surface, you can see the shofar, the, the color of it. Yes, and now it is ready for the next step. It, uh, it involves a lot of steps uh, from rough grinding to fine grinding until we get it very, very polished. And at the end, we cut it, we drill it, and make a mouthpiece. This is, the, in general, the process of making shofar. Robert, shofar so great. What is it about the shofar and you that have connected in Jerusalem for the Feast of Trumpets? Tell us a bit about it. Well, it's interesting you asked. Um, I'm a master Jewish shofar sounder. I was born and raised, I'm the offspring of a first generation, post-Holocaust traditional Jewish American family, born and raised in Los Angeles. But my father, I just found out last week, as a matter of fact, was born on Erev Rosh Hashanah in 1917. September 3rd, 1917 was Erev Rosh Hashanah. And I'm just fulfilling a prophetic destiny of calling on my life. And uh, I, I had a 22 year career in the food and beverage industry in America. And, uh, and 12 years ago, I had a, a falling out and was trying to figure out what I was gonna do when I grow up. <laughs> and uh, lo and behold, I came to Israel and I was on Mount Bental in the Golan Heights my first time in Israel and somebody handed me a shofar and said could you hold this while I go to the restroom and I said sure why not and uh, I took it I started fooling around I put it to my lips and out came the Israeli Defense Force wake-up call and the next thing I know there's 15 Israelis surrounding me with flash bulbs going off cheers and applause and there was a 5.3 earthquake and I got anointed of God to sound the shofar. That was on February 15, 2008 and it began this journey and lo and behold, uh, shofar so great was birthed. In Israel, the shofar is a commodity. In every shop and shuk and uh, store that you go, there's a little basket of them like this and they sell them by the size. If it's this big, it's this much and if it's this big, it's this much more and if it's this big, it's the most. But God has given me a, a new paradigm and what I do is I go to the factory of the founding family of Shofar, uh, who've been doing it for generations, and I test a thousand to find 50 that have the sound of heaven. Wow. And so I've been given the gift not only to be able to sound at least five notes in harmony, but to make melodies. I've gotten about 50 different melodies, and, and I find the Shofars that are anointed ones that can make music. So this is uh, the traditional ram's horn. This is what is sounded in the traditional uh, Jewish synagogues on uh, on Rosh Hashanah. In Leviticus 23, 23, it says on the first day of the seventh month, it shall be for you uh, a holy convocation, a day of rest and no work, a day of blowing, a Yom Teruah, and it shall be a memorial unto you. And what that means is that um, it were to turn backward and cry out to God in repentance. So the, and, and that we're to remember God, but more important that God remember us with, with mercy as opposed to judgment. And so it's a, it's a travail, it's a cry of anguish. So the sound of the ram's horn is really a, a cry of repentance. And it sounds like this. Mm -hmm. 
So is this what's known as Yom Turua? It's Yom Turua. It's a day of blowing. It's, it, it we're commanded to hear the sound of the shofar. And traditionally in the Jewish synagogues, you know, there's been one um, who's been given the honor to be the Baal Tekiah, the Rosh Tekiah, to, to sound the shofar that we would all hear the sound. And there's a, a trope. There's like a hundred shouts that are, that are released, a hundred blasts that are released. And it's the preparing for Moshiach to come, I believe one day on Rosh Hashanah or Yom Kippur, on that hundredth blast, the Tekiah Gedola, uh, we look up, we're looking for Moshiach to come. As I hear the sounds of people worshiping also in the background, would you be able to give us an example of that Yom Atrua? Sure, I've been given the gift to sound a double shofar, a double portion anointing to sound two at once in harmony, so I'll, I'll do that for you. This is the, uh, this is the Yemenite shofar. You know, the shofar is, comes from any kosher animal except one. There's, there's one kosher animal that you cannot make a shofar from, and do you know what that would be? No. It, it's the cow because of the golden calf. Wow. So unless there's no other horn, a kosher horn around, you can only use a cow's horn in, in that instance. But uh, this is the horn of a greater kudu. It's an African antelope. So when the Jews were out in the diaspora, when they, they were, uh, went into exile, Wherever they were, that kosher animal became the shofar. These come from Africa, it's the greater kudu, and it's more melodic. I can make at least five notes. And, and I believe I showed you the, the what one sounds like, but the two in harmony is like this. And, and this is the call, the tekiah. I can feel it from here. <laughs> That's powerful, powerful. I've also been given a download to be able to sound different uh, melodies. As a matter of fact, when we inhale, we inhale the inspiration of the Spirit of the Lord, and we exhale, releasing God's voice in the land. In Genesis, when God spoke the universe into existence, he made a sound over the waters, and that sound had a resonance, and that resonance had a vibration. And when he speaks, he speaks on all uh, sp spectrums of the, all levels of the, sp of the spectrum and he speaks from subsonic to supersonic, and it's transformational, it shifts the atmosphere. Wow. So really, you know, I'm just the vessel. And when we were born, each one of us, if you took your DNA, the genetic code, and you ran it through a computer, you'd be given, it would come out as a formula. If you took that formula and put it in a synthesizer, we'd each have our own symphony. So this is just one way that God has called us to release his voice in the land. Well, I've been known to, to sound many things, but, um, Shout for the Lord. By Omer Yeshuaet Hamru Harui. Joshua said, Shout for the Lord. That's so powerful, so powerful. It's like a call to war or a call to summon uh, the king. Well, it, it, that's what it is. It's, a, it's, it's the coronation of the king. I believe this is the sound that we'll hear when Mashiach comes. I believe that uh, it is a, a cry of victory, it's a cry of rejoicing. It's a Psalm 150. It says, Praise him with the shofar. Could you play some song we may have heard? Um, either at a wedding or a popular song on radio with a small or bigger shofar? Well, actually, I, I have one uh, the Lord just gave me not too long ago. I, I call it Waiting on the Lord. You might recognize it. You'd have to watch a, a television game show to know that one. <laughs> it's called Jeopardy. <laughs> but uh, spiritually speaking, the Lord has given me uh, a sound that um, has blessed a lot of people. As a matter of fact, I was just asked, it was sounded on July 15th in the rotunda of Statuary, Statutory Hall in Congress, um, uh, Baruch Hashem.
Hallelujah. Powerful. Call like powerful. I'm, I'm going to give you 20 seconds of technical advice. I'm going to say a prayer over you. I'm going to anoint you with oil. And then we're going to call for the Ruach HaKodesh to come, the Holy Spirit, to fill you from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet. And it's not about you. There's no right or wrong. There's no good or bad. It's whatever comes out is exactly the sound that you've been created to make. you know I play guitar. Okay, well, <laughs> so, so the technical piece is this. You take it. You want to be really relaxed. Take a deep breath in your diaphragm. It's, it's effortless. <clears throat> you pinch your lips in the form of a kiss, and you just vibrate them like a raspberry on a baby's bottom. You want to hear that you want to hear the vibration and it's not by power or might it's by the spirit yeah so whatever comes out here it will just be magnified here and it's effortless watch pa i say pa to t pa to t watch okay so with that i'm going to say baruch ata adonai eloheinu melech olam Asher Kiddushan of a Mitzvah Tav, Vitzivanu, Ishmael Kol Shofar. Blessed art thou, Lord our God, who of the universe, who sanctifies us with his commandments and commands us to hear the voice of the Shofar. Ashrei Ha'am Yodei Teruah Hashem Bior Penech Avielechun. Blessed are those people who know and understand the sounds of the Shofar. They shall walk in Hashem's light. Amen. Amen. So say, just say, uh, say, help me, Hashem. Help, help me, Hashem. Tazorli, Abba. Bo Ruach HaKodesh. Bo Ruach HaKodesh. Whatever comes out is perfect. Amen. Kol HaKavod. Hatiyah Gadola. Hallelujah.